Hello, our dear candle fans and candle lovers. It's Candle Boom again, our Master Sophia, and our Candle Spirit Michael at the background. Today we're going to make something really interesting. So let's have a look. Sonia, what have you prepared for us today? Today we are going to use uh, a new type of base. So it's still 10 centimeters high, uh, but it's straight, though it has six edges as usual. We haven't used a straight base uh, with this equipment yet. So let's see what we're going to make. Are there any features, any specialties of work uh, when we talk about a straight base? Uh, in case of straight bases, uh, the pattern uh, is doubled uh, from bottom to top. So the pattern uh, begins in the middle, goes up, and then repeat it at the bottom. I'm gonna heat the candle up in blue, in blue from the very beginning. Why? Well, just because I, I want to. Carving candles uh, also has uh, some kind of uh, therapeutical effect in terms of colors. Yes, so you can start, you want to start with blue without white. In other cases, you can start with white or any other color. And if you have a transparent paraffin at your hands, then you can start with it. But we're going to start with the blue one today. Uh, so between us, we call this color uh, blue, but it, it's light blue in fact. Yes, pastel blue, as you can see. Okay, so we're building up more blue layers. It's a nice color, right? It makes me think of the sky, of something light and of the summer. Sonia, what do you have in mind today? So I'm going to make uh, a gradient of colors from blue to green and to yellow at the end. Pay attention to what Sonia is doing right now. So usually we uh, dip all colors, uh, dipping them in white in between to uh, make the colors look different from each other every time. But this time Sonia is mixing them. So she is getting a new color, a new shade. Okay, so then I'm gonna have uh, clear green, uh, greenish, yellowish, something like that. And I'll end up with yellow. So before that, we made a gradient from color to color, from shade to shade, um, uh, on the outer surface of the candle. But this time we're going to make this gradient inside the candle, inside the layer. And when we are going to make the cuts, uh, it's going to be deeper. Well, we'll see. So you shouldn't be afraid of uh, dipping uh, one of dipping one color and then another color. The amount of colored paraffin on the candle is not too big, so it's not gonna influence the color in the cell. But there is one main rule though, so you always have to dip uh, first into a lighter color and then into a dark color. So first dip into white and uh, then uh, into black or something like that. And if you want to dip the candle in white after some other color, then always uh, dip it in water first. Okay. 
Sometimes you have to mix uh, the white color to make it brighter. Right now we're working at uh, the temperature of 60 degrees because our paraffin uh, has uh, our paraffin melts at the temperature close to this one but uh, always pay attention to what kind of paraffin you work with <laughs> it's getting cuter and cuter. So now if you dip the candle all day long, how does your hand feel? Well, <laughs> when, you, when you've been doing that for two weeks already, you get used to it. You get used to everything. But at the very beginning, do you feel like you've gone to the gym? Well, a little bit, yes. It's tiring, even if the candle is a little one. So you've cleaned up the wick already. I haven't even, I haven't even got the chance to tell our viewers about that. Well, you have to do it as quickly as possible. The quicker the better. Uh-huh, so now you've cut the bottom. It's flat and perfect. Check the level. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is flat. The level is fine. Okay, so here we're gonna carve the pattern, um, uh, which uh, will be the same at the top as it is at the bottom. We're just gonna repeat it, like in the mirror. Yes, so, so the uh, both parts of the candle kind of imitate each other. What uh, Sonia is doing now, she is um, marking the middles, the middles where the flowers will be carved at. Yes, take a knife and uh, using its very tip, mark uh, the level where you're gonna place the flowers. It's really easier to know and to see where you have to cut uh, the next flower when you have a mark. And they will be invisible in the end, so no one will notice them. Don't make the marks uh, on the edges, but do that between the edges. That's the place where the, uh, the flower uh, tips meet. So the pattern, the, the cut, it will repeat itself, but uh, the colors, they're going to be a bit different. Is that right? Um, they're going to be almost the same, only the outer layer is going to differ. Each color opens up gradually step by step.
Yes, yes, I can see that. So we get this kind of uh, gradient from dark blue. It becomes darker because the cut is the deepest here. And then it gradually opens up to this peach color, cream color. So you can see the whole palette of blue and green and then yellow and then at the end peach and cream. So that looks like a new element. I think we haven't shown it before, so please tell us. Uh, that's what we call the crown. It's one of the main final elements, and we usually cover it at the top uh, part of the candle. So we kind of bend uh, the middle of the petal a little bit, the, the outer side, and then we press the tip. And that's how we get the effect of support for uh, the top layers. So, now you are making uh, the last top elements. Are you going to have anything above them? No, 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 these are the final elements. You cut uh, the maximum of uh, height. There is no point in uh, cutting further above these. It's not going to look beautiful. And in this way it looks neat and clean. We can say that it's the last vertical point of the candle. Further on we have the horizontal uh, top point and you don't have to go there. Right, and now we're gonna uh, carve the same elements at the bottom half. Are we going to bend them in the same order? Yes. All little petals will create uh, flowers. So do I get it right that we're gonna have uh, a combination of a little flower and a big flower? So, what if we need to make the flowers one by one? If we need to rotate uh, the candle so that one flower is higher and another flower is lower, then we rotate the uh, bottom petal in the opposite direction. Yes, uh, little petals will go close to the big ones and the big petals will join uh, the little ones. So it's kind of a chess order. Well, in this case it's much, much easier. we we'll just uh, repeat the pattern. The knife has to be clean all the time. And it's better to wipe it off with a dry paper tissue. Yes, it has to be clean and warm. But if it's warm in the place where you are, then it's going to be warm anyways. And it's really better if the place where you're carving the candles is quite warm. The warmer it is, the more time you have to finish all the elements of the candle until they freeze. We have to do the last row of the elements. We have uh, the same pattern at both halves of the candle, but the layers at the bottom part of the candle are thicker, so the elements at the bottom are a bit bigger. 
So the only reason uh, that the candle is thicker at the bottom is because uh, paraffin flows down, so the layers uh, become uh, thicker. From the very beginning we had a straight base, and some viewers might think that uh, everything has to be uh, the same, everything has to be similar, but it's not exactly like that. The only way you can uh, make the top and the bottom part equal and the same is that first you dip the candle uh, with its bottom and then you do the same with its top. But usually the bottom is uh, a bit thicker than the top, as a rule. Alright, so all the main elements have been cut and carved. What have you taken? Uh, that's a loop knife. We're gonna create uh, metals for our flowers. Do we only use this knife uh, to create uh, the lines between the edges? Yes. Uh, so we're gonna make uh, some new elements here. They look um, a bit like a bun or a little cake. I'm gonna make these uh, cakes on uh, between each two edges. Yes, yes. So we make uh, a line for the little flower at the top because the distance between the edges is less there. Well, actually you can do it in any order because our flowers go in the order of one little flower, one big flower. If we had them in the chess order, it would have been better to cut uh, the top elements from the side of uh, the little flowers because there is more space there. Yes, don't forget about the order, one after another. When the candle is ready, we usually still have some uh, free edges, free space. So what I would recommend is to not carve anything there. Leave them free, leave them be. Just uh, leave some white or any other color. You don't have to open up the whole candle, because in this case the pattern will be too dense, it's gonna be too much. You need to have some background for all those beautiful elements that you already have on the candle. Check that everything is at the same level. What if uh, this element isn't too good? What if the cake isn't good enough? You can place any element here. You can even put uh, some kind of beads there or carve a simple tongue for the first times that you're carving. Whatever, whatever you want, whatever you can do. As always, we're making a pit 
at the top of the candle and then you should uh, yes do that aha uh -huh. press uh, the base closer to the wick just a little bit so it's flat and hard all right another beautiful candle is ready Thank you, Sofia. It's really wonderful. Looks wonderful. See you later. Don't forget to subscribe.